This week on Storyboard, we speak to Neil Mann, Group CEO BBH, on his expectations from BBH India. We caught up with the very tech-savvy CCO of Sapien Nitro, Donald Chestnut, at Khan Lions and spoke to him about how technology plays a crucial role in his business. And in today's notice board, Protein X is telling us there is something missing in our daily diet and Domino's won't let you miss a burger at their outlets as they create a new offering, Burger Pizza. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. This is Shibani Gharat. Neil Mann, Group CEO BBH, feels that his agency business in India has a very strong strategy, creativity and both of these are delivered by great professionalism. He speaks to Storyboard editor Anant Rangaswamy about the rising challenges in the agency business and what does he expect from BBH India 10 years down the line. Let's hear the full conversation. Neil, uh, thank you for talking to us. Uh, to begin, begin with, uh, tell us what you're happy about in India with BBH. It's interesting when one comes here every six months, which is what I do at the moment, um, one can feel when one walks into the building what the vibe is like and, and how, how rich and flourishing the culture and the mood is. And I said to Subash, my CEO here yesterday morning when I walked in, I said, it feels good here at the moment. You can just feel the chatter and the energy. And why is that? You know, we've got good momentum in terms of um, client wins. Our creativity is better than it's been. So tell me some of your client wins that you have, you bought. Um, some new clients, so Prop Tiger out of Delhi, which is um, an interesting new model for us to get involved in. Um, some of the pitch activity we're involved in at the moment around um, extending the Audi relationship beyond the UK and China. And just a lot of activity that's keeping everybody busy and excited around um, how we build the BBH brand here in India. Right. Uh, are you happy how BBH this brand is getting? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, my, my message and call to each of our, our seven offices is your job is to be the best expression of the black sheep in your market. And the core ingredients and DNA of that are strong strategic thinking, outstanding creativity and the professionalism that BBH is renowned for around the world. Providing you're delivering on those three ingredients, that's the call to arms in the market. And here in India, we have a very, very strong strategy. Um, the creativity is getting better and better and it's delivered with classic BBH professionalism and ethics and transparency. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the process. So tell me, what's the challenge for you, Neil, to see this consistency across seven, seven offices around the world? To see that everyone has a BBH DNA in it? Yeah, absolutely. How difficult is that? Um, I think if everybody understands what the essence of the black sheep is and buys into the ambition we set for the business, that is the most important sort of consideration to start with. And then empowering each of the leadership teams in each of the seven offices to deliver it in the context of their own marketplace, their own culture, their own list of clients, gives them just the right balance, I think, of freedom, but a, a, a clear framework. And actually what we're aiming for is each expression of the black sheep across the globe can be slightly different, you know, providing it's underpinned by those same three core ingredients. And when I'm then sitting in front of global clients, being able to say to them, you can access this type of expertise and this type of BBH creativity in LA, which is centered around content and entertainment, or in Stockholm, which is centered around mobile, or elsewhere around, around the globe, gives us a much richer mix and customer proposition. Uh, one of the challenges is that uh, in a complex world like this, you have the same brand with different budgets, different sizes and scales of budgets in different countries that they operate in. For example, in Axe, you might see a multi-million dollar budget in the, in the UK, or you might see a fraction of that in India. How do you grapple with that and still be, I mean, do black sheep work? Well, I think um, that's the challenge of, of being creative business partners of our clients. I think in some respects we often say the freedom of a tight brief from one of those components can be the size of the budget. I think as long as that's clear up front. There are so many different ways now to build profile and saliency around brands that may not require the traditional big TV budgets but can be um, liberated or achieved through some smarter, more precise investment of dollars. So I think as long as clients have got some fuel to put in the tank, and they've got a clear view of their proposition, and there is some ambition to do some groundbreaking work around their brand, then we're absolutely ready to work with them and excited to help them deliver their agenda. Yeah. One of the challenges for all uh, large agencies today, and you are a large agency, is predict predictability of revenue, as uh, more and more clients look to give you project work rather than sign on annual retainers. How do you deal with that? Especially now that you're part of a network, it's, it's no longer an independent. 
Okay. Well, undeniably, the sort of, I guess, visibility on your revenues is changing if you're running a business like BBHSI. I mean, there's a big shift towards um, projects, but it's really a blend today. And we start out on day one of the year between the traditional retained relationships where we have good visibility on revenues and the need to go and generate a whole sequence of project wins and successes. I think um, one's got to address that financially in terms of having a more flexible cost base. You cannot have the big fixed cost bases now in the context of not having the guaranteed revenue up front. So we're working on a more fluid um, uh, mix in that respect. But I think the second thing is seeing it as an opportunity. Whereas in the past, I think our business development funnel was populated by a few big AOR type opportunities. It's now populated by lots and lots of individual project um, opportunities. And that means that our new business and business development muscles are working much more actively than maybe they have in the past. And it also a call to arms for us to make sure we've got enough hustle and chasing to go and seize those opportunities when they present themselves. Does it also presuppose that you want to budget for a lot more pitches than you ever had to before? Different types of pitches. I think, um, I think our, our whole business development agenda now is a balance of organic business development with existing client relationships and seeing how we can extend our contribution to their business. But also when big pitch situations um, arise, making sure we've got the full BBH artillery pointed very precisely at trying to generate a win for us. In the last three, four years we've seen uh, BBH India trying to do a lot in uh, sort of uh, doing more with uh, clients that are on the international roster. Would you like to share something about that? Um, well, I think one of the advantages... How do you use Walker Brown, yeah. of course? Yeah, one of the advantages of being a global network is, for example, for our team here in BBH India to feel that they can benefit from some of our global relationships, but alongside that I also want them to feel as though they're really in control of their own destiny. And that comes from strong local relationships with local clients and partners where they really are in the driving seat. The positives of global brands is you know, for example, here in India, we feed in opportunities around Axe and Vaseline, two of our Unilever stable brands. The disadvantages are global revenue can sometimes be quite unpredictable. And there's nothing more frustrating than a local CEO contacting me and saying, there's been a move of budgets in New York on a global brand, and as a consequence, we've been um, jeopardized in terms of our ability to invest in resources and drive the company forward. And I say the way to offset that is to have the right balance between local relationships, which you've secured, and you're able to manage within your jurisdiction, plus the global opportunities we're able to layer on top. But you must not be dependent on those global relationships, because it will just be a source of frustration in the long term, particularly as the world's moving to a more fragmented series of project assignments away from the traditional big AOR relationships. Right. You know, John uh, was quite clear about, uh, about ads and scam ads and awards. Uh, what's your position now as the new CEO on uh, awards? Would you like to see BBS winning a lot more awards? If so, what kind of awards would you like to see them in? Well, I think my reflection on, on the recent CAN, for example, is less about SCAN. I think that's always been an unfortunate component of it. BBH has always been very, very clear. We're not interested in that. We're not involved in it, and we never will be. That's no change of position. That's just part of our culture, I guess. Um, my, my perspective on CAN was there was a, a genuine lack of big creative solutions which were driving brand performance forward. I think there's an increasing trend towards either charity-based work or work for small brands, which is clever and innovative and impressive in its own right, but it's not moving the big business metrics. And one of the challenges facing us as leaders of advertising agencies and creative businesses, we've got to justify our position at the top table in terms of return, invest return on investment. And there wasn't enough happening at Cannes in terms of the winners, I think, that firmly planted creative businesses at that top table. Right. Uh, now, you come from the... Uh, business side of it to the to advertising, from from the brand side to advertising. How big an advantage has that been for you? Because we see very little of that in India. We've seen the reverse yeah. in droves, but not this. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to happen too often, or it doesn't happen with a with a good outcome. Right. I think um, I think having an understanding of the way clients tick definitely helps me in terms of the way I interact with them now, and hopefully I can pass on some of that knowledge and and experience to my colleagues. Um, I think the second thing is um, I'm not too, I haven't been born and bred inside the advertising industry and sometimes I think our industry can be a little bit myopic in terms of the way it sees itself, it's too internally focused. 
And having spent 17 years on the client side, I still feel I'm able to bring a relatively uncluttered perspective on the strengths and, and um, value, values around our business, but also where there are some weaknesses and where there can be some blind spots. Right. Finally, Neil, it's uh, eight years since BBH came to India. Uh, you've just taken charge. Uh, what would you like to see by the end of the 10th year in India? Um, first and foremost, a powerful expression of the BBH uh, black sheep brand, and I talked about that earlier. That's so how, would, how would I see it? How you would you it? see it? Yeah. Um, ultimately, by famous groundbreaking work right. um, in the marketplace. Um, and you know, Nigel Bogle always says, we know when we're at our best when we have clients queuing up to come through the BBH door. Right. At the end of the day, that's the ultimate accolade. Um, in, in 2020, for example, I want this business to feel as though it has uh, very, very strong roots in this market, high creative pedigree, and we've built a broader creative platform that goes beyond advertising. It's very much part of our global strategic agenda not to be trapped in the advertising pipe, to leverage our core competency of creativity, but do it across a broader platform. So whether that's in social or CRM or in design or in verticals that we're unlocking like sport, these are all ways for us to flex our creative muscles more broadly. Thank you so much, Neem, and uh, look forward to seeing you in India again. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It is time for us to slip into a short break. When we return, we speak to Global Chief Creative Officer of Sapien Naito, Donald Chestnut, on where would he rather be, CES and SXSW or Khan Lions.